my work with God, there are songs I intentionally avoid. And the cheapest of them all is New Wine. Do you know why I avoid this song? Because anytime I start singing, in the crushing, in the pressing, you are making your wine. Whenever I start singing that song, they will be crushing and they will be pressing. Even though, yes, on the, on the long run, I get to see the good part of it, like the essence of it, but most times the process is not funny. Yeah, this reminds me of um, years ago when Pastor Victoria did. So, like, there was this concert she did then, I think with Ton. One of the songs she did is Invade Me. So, Invade Me, Holy Spirit, like the song, Don't Give Me Time to Put Myself Together, Rush Me. I know I used to sing that song, pray with that song, everything. After that time, that period, I just noticed that there was a change in how I usually related with people. Like, I would see people doing things I ordinarily would come for them and say, What do you think you are doing? <laughs> but, I realized that most times I want to react and I will feel something holding me back, I will feel someone holding me back, a restraint stopping me from actually doing what I want to do to the person or in the situation. And it, it actually goes to show that most of these songs, that they are actually prayers, beyond songs, they are prayers. And recently I was listening to Apostle Joshua Selma, so you know how he would just preach and maybe start singing. So he was preaching, he started singing the song. Whatever you want to do, Lord, you can do through me. Whatever you want to say, Lord, you can say through me. So he now sang a particular line that I'm not exactly sure I've heard him sing it before. He said, Whoever you want to lift, Lord, you can lift through me. Immediately I heard that line, it's interesting. I was like, mm, Whoever you want to lift, Lord, you can lift through me. So as an evil girl, I just did the math. So I was like, Oh, wow. So that means if God can lift someone through me, that means God will lift me to a higher level so that. Let's say he lifts me to level 10 so that he wants to lift someone to level 7, he will now use me. So it's so like, oh yeah, it, it makes sense, it's interesting. So I just started singing that line. So even after the same one, I just, you know, prayed with that line of the song, whoever you want to lift, Lord, you can lift through me. And it was as if God was listening to me. He opened the setting door for me and I was expecting like a dividend, like an income. So when I was sleeping, I just heard that Bible verse that says, Go to the one of Zarephath, I have commanded her to feed you. Within me, I was not like, whoa, who is God commanding to feed me? Like, oh, goodness me, thank you, Jesus. I kept hearing that voice in my scripture. And as I stepped reflecting and meditating on it, I realized that I was a woman of Zarephath and that God was commanding someone to come to me to be fed. I was not like, ah, God, how far now? Money never even come in, don't even kill me. Like, I was just in that space. After some time, God laid someone in my heart. He laid it in my heart to reach out to this person. But I was just like, okay, why, why do I have to? reach out to this person. I connected the dots. I have commanded her to feed you. And it was exactly as if God was telling me I have commanded you to feed this person. The setup changed. Despite the fact that it was just a fraction of my income, it lifted this person. And it was kind of hard because I've not had to give out that amount. It was kind of well, difficult. Initially I was like, I'll just give the one I can. And I could just hear the Holy Spirit tell me, it's a guinea. My friend, you're doing everything. And this actually brings me to why I'm talking about this today. You know, most of the times we can be very selfish. We always want to receive, receive, receive. And we don't ever want to give out. When the Bible says that the giver is more blessed than the receiver, the Bible means that whatever we're giving in life, whatever gift, whatever income, whatever resource, God is not giving it to us as a dumping ground. That's the problem the master had, the, the servant that was given one talent. He buried his own, others traded with it. God is not giving you things and blessings and income for you to dump it or for you to use it just on yourself. Me, myself, and I, Trinity of the devil. When God blesses you, he's blessing you to be a blessing. It can be in form of encouragement, it can be in form of finances, it can be in form of one thing or the other. Over time, God has worked on me to begin to realize that the blessings that he's giving me is for me to be a blessing to someone else. One thing I try to do now is that no matter how little that comes into my account i try to think of how i can use it to brighten someone's day and the thing is that sometimes i actually pray i'll be like holy spirit please direct me to who really needs this and all the times i've had to do that it, it was always that case of oh my goodness i was just in a tight corner and you rescued me so there's this song by darasimi oyo darasimi and loris oyo like 911 it says um Jesus, you found your 911 lover. Jesus, you found your 911 soldier. We just find out that in that song, like God literally stays and looks for vessels. He looks for people that will help him 
that will help his agenda, that will help him save people. Imagine the woman at Zarephath, like God saw that at least she had a little meal, even though it was just one portion, and he sent his prophets there to be fed. And the way God does it, because the woman obeyed, that meal multiplied again and again. I know sometimes we are usually overthinking it to be like, ah, if I give out this one now, I have this, I have need to know the finish you. You have to get to that point where you actually understand that whatever you have, God gave it to you. So if he's asking you for just a portion of it, you should be willing to give it. You should actually ask him for the grace that even if he asks for the whole portion, you'll be willing to give it out. You are blessed to be a blessing. You shouldn't be a dead sea that collects, collects and never give out. And that's why it's called dead, right? Because he collects, 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 collects and never gives out. So if you want to be that living, if you want to be if you want to be a blessing, you have to learn how to bless others through what God has given you. You might say it's little, but it's not so little. And don't say, oh, I can give them my advice, my time, my prayers. Money is involved. No matter how little it is, there's someone that what you're going to do will make his or her day. I remember, I remember sometime my brother celebrated his birthday. I think, I don't know if it was last year or two years ago. He said he just wanted to do something for someone. He went to the market area and saw someone selling popcorn. He just bought everything she had prepared for the day. He shared what he bought um, amongst people that were there. They were so happy, you know, ah, I'm eating popcorn, I'm eating... The lady was so happy. She said that she was tired. She didn't feel like coming to work, but she just knew that she had to come out so that she would get something that she used and eat. And my brother, coming at that point in time, chose to be that 911 soldier, chose to be that 911 lover that God needed to send that girl. She probably had prayed, oh God, when will I finish selling this thing and now go home? And God now sends someone. Even times that I've earned big money, there are times someone can just pay my tea fare. I'll be like, oh my goodness, thank you so much. Like, it will be such a big deal for me. So, you really can't even say, I don't have. Like, you can try. <laughs> when God is giving you, he's expecting you to give. I remember, like, working in law firm, different companies that we had to, like, manage and stuff. You see, um, anytime you're drafting their policies, there must be CSRs. Even when we do board evaluation for companies, one compulsory paragraph that you see across all institutions is CSR, where they're asking them, okay, what did you do for the community around you? Some of them, they will say they dug borehole, or they did this, they did that, they planted trees. Like, even unbelievers understand this. The only thing is that they renamed it and they're not calling it CSR. You'll see billionaires that even the ones that don't believe in God, you tell, they'll tell you that they're giving to charity. That thing, they, they understand that whatever you have, you have to be able to pass it. You have to be able to let it go. You have to learn how to let go. For you to receive, how do you receive? You receive when you open your hand like this, right? You don't receive closing your hand. You receive when you open your hand like this. And for you to see how important this giving is, you find out that um, when in primary science, they say plants exhale oxygen and inhale carbon dioxide. And we, we inhale oxygen and exhale carbon dioxide. Like, that's just, it's just a cycle. Something as yucky as your feces, your excretion. It's something that causes manure to plants that actually still come back to feed you so if you if you actually sit down and realize it's a principle of life it's just it's, it's just like a cycle it, it just doesn't break if you're at that point where god is blessing you or maybe you're even just any little i would just encourage you to give you really do not know whose life you can touch you really do not know whose life you can bless i've been a i've been a partaker of such uh we had somebody like out of this stipend that they had like it blessed me so much and it was like a lifesaver for me at that point in time. Once I always ask myself, if God has used others to do it for me, how much more me? So just like I told you, oh, I wanted to be a sharp baby. Lord, if you can live today, that you can live through me. It's not just by singing it, it's by doing it. So it, it's not even better for you that God blesses you enough so that you can be blessing others than for you to, than for God to bless you. And you're now stingy and he's now bypassing you to bless someone more who he knows will spread that blessing. Like, check it. Do the math. If you really want to start, one thing you can actually start doing is by asking God for the grace. Lord, give me the grace to do this, to do it. Second, they have the understanding that whatever you have was given to you. And it can go in a snap of a finger. So if you can give it to help someone's life, then do it. And thirdly, I would also say that if you have the understanding that problem not the finish, well, I know the finish. So you might as well just give, then it would also help you. And because of that, one thing that will lead is to you budgeting. Where you get to budget maybe 10% of your income. I'm going to use it to look for a life I can make better. It's more realistic that way. So that you know that if, let's say you're earning 100,000 naira. As 100,000 naira is coming in, you know that 10,000 does not belong to you. Probably not the finish, bro. 
you can actually make your life count you can actually become a channel through which god blesses people but disclaimer i'm not saying you should now be silly or not prudent bible says there is bread for the eater seed for the sower so don't eat your seed and don't give away your seed right just know how to strike the balance once the percentage you're bringing out for helping others finish class another person that comes unless it's something that you are led to do you can now tell the person i've exit you cannot tell the person i don't have you get so thank you for coming do all to like subscribe share you subscribe to this channel and also share the video okay what stood out for you most you can drop it in the comment section let's have a conversation okay bye see you toodles